Hi everyone, Christina here. Welcome to another card video at my YouTube channel and blog. Today I'm sharing with you another easy watercolor technique. This is going to be the variegated wash technique. Um, this is something that I use quite often. You have seen me do this in videos in the past. And I'm gonna show you, it's so super easy. It's one of the most fun watercolor techniques that I do and that lots of watercolorists do. And it's because you get that really classic soft colors mixing look that is very well known when it comes to watercoloring. So the first thing you wanna do is you want to tape your watercolor paper down to a hard surface. And a hardboard or a clipboard or something like that is best because you are going to be picking it up and kind of moving it around. The next thing you wanna do is take a large brush, a watercolor brush. Um, you could also use with a small brush, but it's much easier with a large. And you're going to wet the entire surface of your watercolor paper. And you're going to add quite a bit of water. And then you're just gonna wait a minute or two, or maybe just you know 30 seconds to a minute, and let that water sort of soak into the paper. That's why I'm not cutting away for this portion of the video. Usually I would edit all of that wait time out. But I want you to, to I wanted you to see how long I let that water kind of soak into the paper. Because watercolor paper, while it does absorb water, it does still need a little bit of time to really be saturated completely. And you want your paper to be damp and wet, but not puddling or sopping wet because then that's a little too much water. If that happens, just go ahead and wait a little bit longer for all that water to absorb. You just want it to be absorbed into the surface of the paper before you start adding color. So I'm dropping in different shades of green and I chose to use a green color palette um, for a couple reasons. The first reason is when you're first starting out with these variegated washes, sometimes it's a little bit easier to have uh, just shades of one color because you're not going to run the risk of the colors mixing and coming out with like a brown muddy mess or something like that. So if you use colors that are similar in shade, so here I have more of a bluish green and then a more yellow green, that really helps. If you want to expand out to a little bit more color variation, which is normally what I like to do, try two colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. So um, if you just envision in your mind the color wheel or even just a rainbow, if you think of a rainbow like Roy G. Biv, the order of the colors, you want to have two colors that are next to each other. So in this case, I could add more yellow and that would be really nice, or I could add more blue. So red and, or not red, don't add, don't add red to this, um, blue and green would be really pretty together. So I've added all that color on and I'm just dabbing up some of the water that's kind of seeping up and collecting at the edges. So I wanna make sure it's not uh, going to flow back into my painting here and cause a problem. Picking up my board and really moving it around and helping that color um, kind of mix and melt. I'm using gravity to my advantage. So the second reason that I'm using shades of green for this particular background is I'm going to be using a dye from Simon Says Stamp called, uh, called So Lucky to Know You, or that's what the dye says. It's letters that I did, some lettering that I did for Simon. And I thought this would be a really fun card for St. Patrick's Day. So I don't really... I don't really celebrate St. Patrick's Day <laughs> other than maybe I might wear green, you know, so I don't get pinched by my nieces or nephews, but um, I just thought this would be kind of fun to send off to a friend or, or anyone in my life really and, you know, for St. Patrick's Day. So that's why I'm using green. So while this background was still rather wet, like it hadn't dried at all, I added in some more darker shades and that's because it was starting to just fade out a little bit too much. So in the back of your mind, always remember that the watercolor will fade back and dry lots lighter than it appears while you're painting. So if that, if you, start, if you see it starting to fade back some more and it's not quite dry, go ahead and add some more on top. You can see how faded back this ended up being. And one of the reasons why it faded so distinctly and so softly is because of all that water that I used in the paper that really kind of disperses the color and dilutes it. 
So right here, I, I kind of debated showing you guys this because it's kind of a weird thing that I sometimes do. When I have a word die that has lots of words on it, um, I want to make sure that it's positioned straight on my project. So I'll turn it over and I'll add like some post-it tape or something um, kind of along the bottom line of one of the lines of words. And so it makes sure that it makes sure that it's completely straight. And then I'll place that down onto my project. And that just helps me um, visualize the horizontal line of the words. So I don't have the words kind of like skewed off to one direction or the other, if that makes sense. So I round that through my Big Shot machine and this watercolor paper, this is some more Arches cold press watercolor paper, cuts like a dream. The die had, the die had no problem cutting through. It's a very soft paper, so it cut through without any problems. So I'm prepping two card bases. I'm gonna make two cards out of this one die that I've cut. And so I'm using some Nina Solar White 110 pound cardstock. And I scored that at five and a half to create a top folding card. So now I'm gonna work on this one that's going to have the positive area that I've cut out. That's going to be adhered down onto the card front. These two cards are going to be so super simple and easy. I debated even including them as a separate video for this kind of mini series I've done because they're so simple. I didn't do anything particularly inventive on these cards, but I did want to include how I adhered the words onto the card because I thought, it, you know, for someone who is a little bit of a perfectionist, I, I certainly am, I would class, classify myself as that. I really prefer to have these letters adhered in the exact positions on the original die. And even though I'm the one who designed this die and I did the lettering, I could probably, you know, get them back into position into very, fairly the same spots. But just in case, you know, I was going to put it in incorrectly or just for ease of mind, I kind of devised this little way of doing it, which is using the outer cut and I just uh, use some post-it tape to kind of add a hinge on the side. And I'm using that to kind of lift up that area. And then it allows me to adhere the words down onto the front of the card. So I take my tweezers and I hold the letters of the words in my left hand. And then use this bottle of Ranger Multimedia Mat. And I just squeeze that onto the letter. And then I can use my tweezer tweezers to help me put that on the front of the card and then lift this outer area. So uh, some of you have asked about that adhesive that I use, the Ranger Multimedium. It does not come with that needle point, like the needle applicator on the top. That's actually a quilled precision tip that I've added. So I'll, I always include that in my supply list as well. So if you want to see you know, or, or add that to your mini bottle of your Ranger Multimedia Mat or your Glossy Accents, you can do that. So I've added a bunch of foam adhesive. I cut up little tiny foam squares. I adhered that all to the different areas on the other watercolor piece. And then I adhered that to the front of the card. Now this was really time consuming because there were so many small areas in the center there. Um, I think it took me, in fact, I checked when I was editing this video, I spent five minutes just adhering foam tape to the back of this watercolor piece. So time consuming, but still really cool looking. I also added the interior pieces on some of those areas. I did not add it on the O's or on the bottom of the K, however. So that's the card for today. Hope you guys enjoyed. I will be back on Monday with another card video. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.